Hi there, this is Janet Simmons and welcome to the first video in Module 2. The first module gave you a foundation in workplace learning history, trends, and the roles and expectations of those involved. This module builds on that knowledge as we discover who the adult learners are today. We will begin with two analysis questions and then we'll examine the differences between the generational cohorts and how they affect workplace learning. I will also provide you with a Canadian perspective of demographics. Finally, the video will end with two synthesis questions. The two questions I'd like you to think about as you watch this video are, who are you as an adult learner? You may wish to answer this by examining your learning preferences. The second question is really a statement. Do you agree or disagree with this statement? But this is much more than a yes or no answer. I'd like you to think about why or why not you believe there is a greater diversity amongst adult learners now than there was about, say, 30 years ago. As always, I encourage you to write these questions down and think about your answers as you watch the video. Five cohorts make up the vast majority of today's workers. The baby boom began in 1947. This cohort began prior to 1947 was born during the Second World War. This cohort is now in their early to mid 70s and there are still some people working who belong to this cohort. Because of the limited number of people from the World War II cohort currently in the workplace, we will take a closer look at five cohorts, which comprise of people born between 1947 and 2010. You may have heard of some of the names for the different cohorts of learners you'll find in today's workplace. Let's take a look at each of their general characteristics. First, there is the baby boomers. They had to compete for jobs, but not so much if they were born in the early years of the booms. That's because there were more jobs than there were applicants. Digitally speaking, they had access to training and enough money to buy their own computers. Gen Xers are part of the baby boom generation, but they were born in the latter years. They entered the workforce in the midst of a recession, didn't have the money or opportunities to train, and tend to be self-taught. The baby busts are the children of the baby boomers. They were the first generation to be taught computer skills in school. Because there are less of them in this cohort, it was fairly easy for them to get their first jobs. The Gen Y cohort is interesting because it comprises of people whose parents are either late baby boomers or Gen Xers. This cohort comprises of the first digital natives. They had many of the job seeking challenges of their parents. Finally, there is the millennial cohort. We don't know yet how they will fare in the job market, but it is expected it will be similar to that of their parents, those born in the baby bust, which means it should be easy for them to find work. In this chart, we can easily see the job opportunities typical of each cohort. I'd like to draw your attention to the bottom row. All cohorts have different degrees of digital interest and proficiencies. They may have different preferences to learning in the workplace. For example, baby boomers may already have a background in what is taught. The Gen Xers may want to learn it themselves and Gen Y and millennials probably prefer media rich learning with a high level of social engagement. It's important to know that the cohorts have the same names in Canada as in New Zealand, the US and Australia. In the US, the boom started a year earlier and ended in 1964. In New Zealand and Australia, women didn't have as many children and women were slower to move into the workforce than their North American counterparts. These were the only four countries where a boom happened. However, Canadian demographics are unique and did not follow the global population patterns. Canada had the largest boom in the industrialized world because the Canadian boom was so big. Canadian boomers are a more important factor in Canadian life than American boomers in American life. When you read about demographics, be sure to find out the source of the data so you'll know if it's applicable to Canada. 
There are two synthesis questions I'd like to discuss in the tutorial and in the discussion board. Think about your workplace and try to define who these learners are. How would you engage all of these learners in workplace learning? Finally, how can discovering the motivations of workplace learners improve workplace learning? Understanding today's workplace learners is a challenge for CLOs, instructional designers, trainers, and all the others involved in workplace learning, particularly because each year the generation ages, their experiences change, and their learning needs also change. Thanks for watching.